Hey guys, you're listening to the Time of Football podcast, and this is our analysis of the AFC South prior to the 2018 NFL season. Glad you're joining us for the Time of Football podcast. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful 4th of July. I for sure did. Um, I... Not on the 4th, but the week of the 4th, I went to a flag football game. So, if you guys have been watching NFL Network or been keeping up with the NFL on social media, you know that they've been advertising this whole flag football tournament or this flag football league, whatever it is. And you'll see people comment on it where they're like, well, this is what the NFL is going to be like in 10 years. No, it's not. Um, And it's a bunch of former players... And some of them are well-known, like Michael Vick, Terrell Owens, Chad Ochocinco, and then some of them are like Jimmy Clausen, Nick Collins, Justin Forsett, Jonas Gray, where like you, you hear those names and you see those people and you go like, oh yeah, you used to play in the NFL. You know, those kind of players. Um, but it was fun. It was fun to watch, fun to go to that because they had um, a game here in Atlanta, actually two games in Atlanta that I attended and I watched at a local college here. Not a lot of people there because only like dedicated football fans were there and also like families that wanted to like, you know, take their family out to go see this game. It was only 10 bucks, which I, I thought it was definitely worth the money. Um, but it was lots of fun. I had lots of fun that uh, week, uh, the July 4th week. Yo, I, but speaking of the people in attendance, um, if you I okay, so I have never seen more people with Odell Beckham hair than the age of thirteen. I don't know what it is, but if you are a football fan and you're an athlete and you're thirteen years old, when you hit that age of thirteen, you just want to have Odell Beckham hair. Um, I have never seen anyone else, maybe besides um gosh, what's that guy's name and he's one of the ball. Uh, you know, like Lavar Ball, Lonzo Ball, Mellow Ball. I don't. I'm, I think it's Mellow Ball. Whatever his name is. I guess she has Odell-ish hair. But yo, I have never seen more people than the age of thirteen have Odell Beckham hair than any other age. If you're if you're the age of thirteen and you are an athlete and you love football and you have Odell Beckham hair, hey. Be your own person. Get yourself your own identity. It's always easy to make fun of middle schoolers. But thank you so much for tuning in to the Sound of Football podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. So we wrapped up the NFC. We already talked about each division in the NFC, the South, the West, the East, and the North. Now, we're transitioning over to the AFC, and the division that we're going to talk about today, we're talking about the AFC South, and we are going to break down each team. We're going to break down the Colts, the Jaguars, the Titans, and the Texans in that order. And the first team that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the Indianapolis Colts. So the biggest storyline coming out of Indy is Andrew Luck is still hurt. Now, granted, he's not as hurt as he was last year, but he's transitioning to where he could play in week one. Um, He's been throwing around footballs recently, uh, but it was unfortunate that he had to miss the whole entire season last year because it just came out of nowhere. Um, No one expected him to really miss all the season, uh, let alone just one game. And... It's one of those injuries where when the Colts ended up being out of playoff contention, being one of the worst teams in the NFL, they were like, yeah, Andrew, it's not worth it. Just rest up, worry about next year. Well, Andrew Luck has been throwing footballs recently. He started throwing college-sized footballs, and then he transitioned over to pro-sized footballs. And he says he's been feeling fine. Personally, I believe he's going to start week one. Um, I think that this is a time where they got a new head coach and Frank Reich. Um, I think this is the time that the Colts get serious about their own push because last year they were just in that whole bubble where 
what do we do with Chuck Pagano? Do we get rid of him? Do we keep him for another year? And then eventually, after like four or five weeks into the season, they, I think that they knew, the front office knew, Jim Irsay knew, yeah, this guy isn't going to be our future. Um, right now, I think that if Andrew Luck were to play week one, um, I think that'd be good for him because it might take a couple games for him to get used to, um, to get back into the swing of things, to be back into that NFL mindset. But, um, or at least that, that Sunday football regular season game mindset. Um, but I think he'll be fine after that. I think he'll put up the same stats that he would put up uh, back in 2016 or 2015, years prior to that. Um, talented quarterback. Um, debatably a top 10 quarterback in this league. Um, so hopefully he is healthy enough. But uh, going off that offense, they also got rid of Frank Gore. So Frank Gore has been aging a bit. But he has been their bell cow back. He's been getting um, 260 carries a season. And there was one game last year against Buffalo in the snow where he carried the ball 36 times. And that was most by any running back last year uh, in a single game. Finally got rid of him um, just because of, of age and contract details. And now he's down in his home in Miami. But now they're leaning towards a running back by committee approach with Marlon Mack, with Robert Turbin. Um, the running backs coach in Indianapolis said that they're not going to lean on just one running back, but they're going to take that approach. Um, I feel like Robert Turbin, he's going to be suspended. And Marlon Mack is that more talented back. We saw flashes of his rookie season last year where he came into the game sporadically and he just balled out. He would have carries that were um, or games that he would average six yards a carry. And eventually, I think Indianapolis is going to lean on him more, and maybe they will in the second half of the season next year. But they're going to take that uh, committee by approach um, in Indianapolis. But the Colts ended up getting one piece in that NFL draft that I feel like was a steal for them, and that was Quentin Nelson out of Notre Dame. He's an offensive guard, and he fell, I feel like, in that draft. I understand that other teams have other needs. You know, you could draft Sam Darnold if you need a quarterback. Baker Mayfield at number one, even though you could have gotten him at number four and gotten Saquon Barkley at number one, but that's another podcast for the AFC North. We'll talk about that in the future. But Quentin Nelson fell to the Colts, I felt like, and... The Colts were a team that felt like they could trade down. They were at number three. They traded down to number six so that the Jets could trade up to number three. But even from that number six spot, they said, we're open to trading down. But when they saw that Quentin Nelson was on the board, we're like, we got to get this guy. So Quentin Nelson is someone that can help out the run game and the passing attack. People are already touting him as a Hall of Famer, even though he hasn't played a single snap in the NFL. Um, I'm not an NFL scout, so I wouldn't know. But just from the game footage that I've watched, it seems like, yes, he does have the potential to be at least a Pro Bowl offensive guard in this league. Um, I would even compare him to someone like, um, for you old school fans, Steve Hutchinson. If you don't know who he is, um, for you Seahawks fans that were Seahawks fans before 2012, not a lot of you guys out there. Um, but for you guys that know Steve Hutchinson, he was on the Seahawks in the mid-2000s, um, and he helped Sean Alexander out a lot. He was also on the Minnesota Vikings, I feel like, as well. Um, so he, he he's a great offensive guard, debatably a Hall of Famer. I see qualities of Steve Hutchinson in Quentin Nelson just because of the size, the athleticism, the power that that man, Quentin Nelson, possesses. He's going to be forced to be reckoned with um, for the next few years in Indianapolis. The Jacksonville Jaguars are a team that went all the way to the AFC Championship last year. The question is, can they repeat the same success? Um, Hopefully they don't because they want to have more success, and that's getting over that one game that they have left to get them to the Super Bowl. Hopefully they can win the AFC Championship, get a Super Bowl victory out of that as well. They have the same pieces, for the most part, on offense and defense. A.J. Bouye and Jalen Ramsey proved why they are the best cornerback duo in the NFL today. Jalen Ramsey is a guy that talked a lot of trash last year, 
But that's only because he knew that he could back it up, and he can. Ramsey kind of reminds me of a younger Richard Sherman back when he was in Seattle in 2012 and 2013. Talk a lot of trash, but you can back it up. But I want to highlight the defensive line on this defense, and that's Calais Campbell on one side of the ball. But there's another guy, another defensive end, that a lot of people are overlooking and a lot of people don't know about, and that's Yannick Nguakwe um, at defensive end. So he had over 10 sacks last year. He personally had my vote for the Pro Bowl, but he was kind of snubbed and in, in getting selected to go to the Pro Bowl. Um, so a lot of people don't know about him, but he's also a talented piece um, that they want to make sure that they have in Jacksonville for a very long time. Offensively, Blake Bortles is still their quarterback. I know a lot of criticism goes towards Bortles. He hasn't had um, an amazing year um, or wasn't able to repeat the same success that he has had back in 2015, um, his sophomore season. But they seem like they want to get the right pieces around him. And the things that Jacksonville has been doing in the offseason, in the NFL draft, is that they've been getting, kind of, kind of going off that old saying, out with the old and with the new. So they got rid of their older wide receivers like Alan Hearns and Alan Robinson. Um, and they're going to be sticking with those younger guys like Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook. Um, and even at tight end, getting rid of Mercedes Lewis, sticking with Ben Koyak. Um there's not a lot of, of, I don't want to say old people, that sounds rude, um, but there's a lot of youth in Jacksonville. Um, the oldest player on that team is 31, and that's Calais Campbell, um, along with two other people. I think it's Jeremy Parnell and Don Carey. Um, all three of those people are 31 years old, and then they have Barry Church, um, coming in at 30. So those are only four players that are 30 or older that are in Jacksonville. So they're taking that young approach, which is phenomenal to think because this is a team that is that has caliber to go to the Super Bowl. And with the youth on this team, if they don't make it this year, well, their team is still young. So they have two or three more years of that youth to make it to the Super Bowl. Um, so it'd be funny to see what... what um, Jacksonville would do with Blake Bortles. Um, a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of him. Um, and he's kind of like an internet meme. And um, you see that Twitter account, Bortles Facts, which is one of the greatest Twitter accounts that ever existed. Go follow it. Um, but they seem like Bortles is going to be their starting quarterback. Um, the backup that they have is Cody Kessler, which they traded for. But I think that was more so as an insurance policy because um, they were out with Chad Henney as the backup quarterback, wanted to bring in a younger guy, brought in, brought in Cody Kessler. Um, so we'll see what's going to happen. We're going to continue talking about the AFC South. We've got two teams left to talk about. That's the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans. But first, I wanted to take a moment, take a break, and talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And should be near and dear to your hearts as well. And that is... Patreon. Patreon is the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator. So, think of it like a GoFundMe, but it's every single month. Um, content creators as in videographers, YouTubers, podcasters, um, Instagram models that have no talent... Um, people with Odell Beckham hair, whatever it may be. If you have a Patreon page and you like the content that they produce, um, then you can go ahead and and sponsor them. So we at Time to Football have a Patreon page. We launched it about a couple months ago, and it's uh, we 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 have perks for you guys. So if you give five dollars, you get a free Time to Football T-shirt. But if you give as little as one dollar a month you get a free time of football wristband and there's going to be many, many more perks coming out in the future. Um, But also on top of that, you can also read up where your money goes on our Patreon page. Um, There's certain projects that we're working towards and you can read those kind of projects, um, what your funds go towards and those projects that you can help sponsor and help launch. Um, 
if everyone listening to this podcast and watching this podcast um, gave just one dollar a month, just and I say this all the time, but if it's just one dollar a month, we would have enough funds to grow time to football tremendously. I kid you not. And that that money that goes towards time to football, listen, it's not going to my pocket. It's really not. It's all being invested towards time to football, towards this YouTube show, towards this podcast, um, for many other projects that we've got coming up. Um, I've got another job on the side. I provide for myself with that other job. But for time to football, yes, we do get revenue out of this. But if you want to go to patreon.com slash time to football, read up on the projects that um, you can help sponsor. You can help make those projects into a reality um, by becoming a Patreon um, for time to football. So that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time, the number two, football. That's patreon.com slash time to football. Patreon.com slash time to football. Patreon.com slash. Y'all get the point. I just spit on my table. Um, I wonder if um, hairstylists or barbers that um, cut people's hair to make it look like Odell Beckham, I wonder if they have a Patreon page. Let's do that, actually. Let me. Uh, let me take a moment to look that up. Um, but while I'm looking that up, let's talk about the Tennessee Titans. So last year they went to the uh, postseason. They were nine and seven, but people <sighs> kind of saw them as a joke. Um, that's that's not how I saw them. I saw them as a football team. Did I see them as the worst football team in the postseason? It's debatable. I mean, they beat Kansas City. Kansas City was more talented, however, um, but they were able to put off, pull off that upset, uh, come back twenty-one to three, which I'm still upset about because I wish they came back twenty-eight to three, or at least the Chiefs were up twenty-nine to three. Because me, as a Falcons fan, if that happened, if the Chiefs were up twenty-nine to three and the Titans came back, then they would never talk about twenty-eight to three. Instead, the Chiefs would be the butt of the joke. Where, like, why would you give up a twenty-nine to three lead? But, uh, but they didn't. It was twenty-one to three, and the Falcons are still the butt of the joke. Um, um, but the Tennessee Titans. So they did make the postseason. They were labeled as the worst team to make the postseason. Um, but a lot of the frustrations that they had with that team um, was from the head coach. Um, so they thought that Mike Mularkey wouldn't be a good fit for the Tennessee Titans and they were just ready to move on from him. And after the season, they finally did. They brought him. They brought in Mike Vrabel. Um, if that name sounds familiar, he was on the New England Patriots, won Super Bowls with them, caught a touchdown during a Super Bowl as a linebacker, which is phenomenal to think. Um, so he was J.J. Watt before J.J. Watt was J.J. Watt. And Mike Frabel is a player's coach because he played in the mid-2000s. So he's still, in, in head coaching terms, relatively young. Um, obviously not as young as someone like Sean McVay. Um, but he still is around the game or he still stuck around the game. And he still has a feel of what the locker room is like um, here in 2018. So... He comes in. He's a player's coach. People are going to love playing for him. He's kind of like that motivator kind of coach. Um, can they make it back to the postseason? Let's break down this team. Let's start with a quarterback. Marcus Mariota. 13 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. That's not going to cut it. How they went to the postseason, it was good play from a couple of their linebackers. Um, with one of them including Avery Williamson. Um, but also on top of that, it was a combination of good run game as well. Good tight end play to make you look much better than you actually performed last year in Delaney Walker, who seems like an ageless wonder. I don't think that Marcus Mariota is going to throw 13 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. That's a terrible touchdown to interception ratio. I think he'll be a lot better. Um, but it is still going to take some time, I think, to get used to that new um, offensive scheme that Mike Vrabel is going to bring in. So a lot of... Um, 
reliance might be put on the run game for Tennessee with Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. They got rid of DeMarco Murray. He's still a free agent, which honestly, I don't know why. Um, I still feel like he's a talented back that could perform really well or could be a good substitute for someone that gets hurt. Um, But Derrick Henry, people are saying that this is finally uh, his time to shine. Because for you guys that love fantasy football, you kept on drafting Derrick Henry every single season. And you were like, 2016 is his season. Nope. 2017 is his season. Nope. 2018 is his season. Whoa. Hold up a minute. Back up. Deion Lewis was brought in from New England. Deion Lewis is not going to be just that third down back. He's going to be someone that the running back running back coach actually confirmed this in Tennessee, where they're calling Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis 1A and 1B, meaning that it's going to be a running back by committee approach. Later in the season, if one takes off, they might lean towards him even more. And I think Derrick Henry has that potential to take off more than Deion Lewis. But starting off, they're going to be that team that is balanced with the running backs where Derrick Henry could get 13 carries a game. And so Deion Lewis can also get 13 carries a game as well. Um, They wanted to take that approach for so many years with with Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray. Um, but DeMarco Murray was that guy that kind of showed up a little bit more than Derrick Henry did, um, so they relied on him as the bell cow back. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, I think this run game will be good, regardless of who the running back is, the starting running back, um, just because they got two amazing offensive linemen and Jack Conklin and uh, Taylor Lewan. So the run game, I think, will be pretty nifty as well. So I just did a uh, a Google search of Patreon. Um, I went to Patreon's website, looked up hairstylists, and I don't see anyone really with that cuts Odo Beckham style hair. Um, I also Googled it just now, and I can't seem to find anyone. Um, if you're someone that does cut that kind of hairstyle, um, reach out to me. I would love to get you on a video and just interview you and, and ask you what your age demographic is that that comes into your to your shop and asks for that hairstyle um middle schoolers are just fun to make fun of um so now we're going to talk about the uh houston texans the last team that we're going to talk about unfortunately they lost to sean watson last year he's coming back and not only that but another key piece on defense is coming back and these two guys have been um, working out together, rehabbing together, and that's J.J. Watt. So unfortunately, J.J. Watt has been gone uh, for the past two seasons um, due to season-ending injuries. A lot of people are making fun of him now and saying that you know whenever he's in a picture, posing for a picture, that he got injured posing for that picture. The internet's amazing, I know. Um, but J.J. Watt, if he can stay healthy for all 16 games, I don't see why... He and Jadavion Clowney cannot get a total of 20 to 25 sacks. Um, just those two alone. Why not? J.J. Watt can get 12 and a half sacks a year. Clowney can get 12 and a half, half sacks a year. So that defense is, is killer regardless, and it's has been, it has been killer for the past three years. Um, offensively, Deshaun Watson is coming back. 19 touchdowns in just seven games. That's something good, and that's something optimistic to look forward to. What can he do in 2018? People are saying that he's already a uh, top 10 quarterback. What I would do is I would just pump the brakes right there because he only, he's only played seven games. Yes, in those seven games, uh, he was better than most quarterbacks that played in seven games, but still, he has a lot to prove, I feel like. Um but this team is the favorite to win the AFC South. Um, Deshaun Watson has a good receiving core around him. And it's kind of a shame why DeAndre Hopkins isn't talked about as being one of the best receivers in the league. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. He's being talked about as one of the best receivers, but not as the best receiver. And I know Antonio Brown and Julio Jones, you could give the edge to them. Um, I'm not saying that DeAndre Hopkins is better than Antonio Brown. 
statistically, Brown has had best stats. But, man, this guy, at least give him props when he's catching a ball on the sideline. He is the greatest sideline receiver I have seen in the NFL in a long time. Um, probably in the in the last 10 years. Um, so DeAndre Hopkins is a guy that him paired with Will Fuller, um, I think this receiving core is going to go off. And I, I don't know whether I want to spoil my bold prediction for the season because we're going to have a, a, a podcast later on talking about um, bold predictions, my bold pr- predictions for the 2018 season. Um, but that's going to come out like in late August, early September before the season starts. Um, but I'll give you a, a little bit of a preview that one of the bold predictions, it does involve DeAndre Hopkins and it does involve Will Fuller. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and say it. Why not? Um, one of my bold predictions for 2018 is that DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller will be the best wide receiver duo in 2018. That's right. Better than uh, Marvin Jones and Golden Tate. Better than Josh Gordon and Jarvis Landry. Better than Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. I feel like DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller, a healthy Will Fuller, with a healthy Deshaun Watson, are going to light it up. Both of them are going to get over 1,000 yards receiving. DeAndre Hopkins, I feel like, could get in the area of 10 touchdowns a year. Um, so I think this is going to be the best wide receiver duo that we're going to see in 2018. As far as if they'll make the playoffs, I feel like they will. I feel like they are um, the favorite to win the AFC South. Um, because a lot of other teams, you can talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars, but like I said, with other teams getting better, even though this defense is talented, um, it's going to be tough for the Jacksonville Jaguars to get back to the AFC Championship with the Houston Texans there um, with a healthy J.J. Watt and a healthy Deshaun Watson. So if I had to rank them, um, I feel like the Colts, um, I'd, I'd say the Tennessee Titans would be fourth in the AFC South. Um, I don't think that they're going to make the playoffs. I still think that they're going to be learning under Mike Vrabel. Um, I still think that Marcus Mariota, he's not going to throw 15, to, uh, 15 interceptions this year, but he's still going to take some time getting used to everything. Um, so I still think that they're a year away from making an AFC wildcard push. Um, third, I got the Indianapolis Colts just because of Andrew Luck. Honestly, it's, it's, it's amazing how one player can just – change the whole perspective of a team can change the whole outcome of whether they make the playoffs or not um Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts I don't think that they're going to make the playoffs in 2018 but I think they'll better be better than the Tennessee Titans at least and they'll at least be in playoff contention for the first 12 to 13 weeks of the season um they could win the AFC South or earn a wild card spot but I think eventually they'll just lose one or two games that's going to push him out um second i got the jacksonville jaguars behind the houston texans even though i got them second i do see them getting wild card spot um and again all of these predictions i haven't sat down yet and looked at everybody's schedule and like marked they're going to win this game they're going to lose this game um but i think as far as talent goes i think the jacksonville jaguars are um more talented than the Houston Texans only if the Texans have a player or two that is injured, a key player like they did last year. Um, And first, they got the Houston Texans to win the AFC South. Um, Just like I said, if they they get healthy, this defense can tear it up. This offense can tear it up. Um, And Bill O'Brien is one of the more underrated head coaches in the NFL. He's an offensive guru that plays well with his quarterbacks. And Deshaun Watson, I feel like, is the guy that Bill O'Brien has been looking for for so many years ever since he came to Houston. But that's it for our analysis of the AFC South. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, hit that subscribe button right underneath this video. And when you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell icon because that notifies you every time we come out with a video. Um, So you can stay up to date with these podcasts or any other content that we come out with on YouTube. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, 
hey, just give us a five-star review. Like, rate and review this podcast. Under the podcast app, if you click on Time to Football's page, it will give you an option to um, give us five stars. And if you don't want to give us five stars because you hate this podcast, well, guess what? Why'd you listen to this podcast all the way through? It's because you like it. But if you don't like it, give us criticism. Give us uh, or, or leave us comments on why um, or, or how we can change this podcast because we seriously do get those um, or take those comments into consideration. Um, unless you're 13 years old, then you think I care about what a 13-year-old thinks about my YouTube show? Psh, please. I'm telling you, it's just so fun to make of middle schoolers because just they're so vulnerable. Um, but on Instagram, we're heavily involved on Instagram. So if you leave us a, a, a comment on Instagram, a question, whatever it is, we're going to answer it for you on air. Um, but the username for Instagram is time to football, and that's at time to football. Time, the number two, football, all one word. Um, if you just search that anywhere, really, you can search it on Facebook. You can search it on SoundCloud, which these podcasts go up on. Um, you'll find us on there. Next week, we're going to talk about the AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so until next week, hope you guys have a good one. Take care, and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.